Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lasses of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. LBJ11, but we're uh, gaining the black vote. The Republican Democrats have accomplished one of the most monumental feats in social American history with the passing of the Voting Rights Act. Not only are the African Americans unimpeded on the way to vote, but now they're actively flocking to the polls, greatly increasing their voter turnout. The surge of African American votes has spread throughout the South, not only in the major cities of Birmingham, Atlanta, or Houston, but also in the smaller cities of Little Rock, Jacksonville, and Biloxi. The population was even gaining ground in the poor rural areas of central Alabama and on the outskirts of the huge Georgia cities. But President Johnson was hard at work today. It was inevitable that with a proper representation, uh, African Americans would go to the polls in huge numbers to show support for the party of their choosing. If Johnson could garner the African American votes, it's possible that the RDC could become the dominant political bloc in the South, displacing the MPV menace. This vote would make up for all the Dixocrats who quickly deserted the party once the act was passed. Town was of the essence for President Johnson as began to dial up activists, church leaders, professors all throughout the Deep South, starting with Alabama, Arkansas, and Florida. We the African Americans on our side. The African Americans are becoming more and more politically relevant. Should we succeed with the Great Society program, we might be able to include them in our electoral coalition. Reality check. God is a struggle trying to sit through all the pol policy platform this year. Your eyes glaze all over. Glaze, uh, eyes glaze over after 10 minutes. H. Ladd Plumley, head of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, admits no words as he settled into the passenger seat of his waiting car, which pulled away from the RDC headquarters with a gen genteel growl. His companion, Lee Ayakoa, uh, president of the Ford Motor Company, not awarely, his face glum. Besides bashing the Germans and the Japanese, there's nobody with any pizzazz in either RDC or the MPP this year, Ayakoka said, resting his head on the, uh, on the headrest, but neither of us gets to sit this one out. If you ask me, Plumley replied as soon as he, uh, as he lit a cigarette, we'll split our best between George Romney and Phyllis Schleife in the primaries. At least they can write a coherent sense, and maybe they'll care if we push their books in our recommended executive readings. You're joking, Ayakoka laughed. Only for his eyes, widens Plumley didn't join in. You're not joking, Schleife, really? The one who's been smearing this establishment, including you, me, and everyone else in the corporate America, with a wider brush that she can find for years? You were in that room with me earlier. How often do politicians say one thing in April and then change your mind or change your tune come December? Comes with every election season. Yeah, and that's usually because they don't stick to a tune to begin with, I cook as hissed. This woman's been saying the same thing for years. She's poisoned, Plumley. Romney's the only choice. We'll see. And Dick's crowd discomfort. President Johnson walked with a small cohort of Secret Service beneath the Great Dome of the Capitol. As the Senate was not currently in session, fewer people than usual stood in the rotunda. But one appeared to be approaching Johnson rather quickly. Governor Ross Barnett, Johnson said, recognizing the man, what a pleasant surprise. I was just going to meet with Rockefeller. Care to join me? Barnett did not appear to be in an amiable mood. No, Mr. President, he said curtly. I just came here to say I was disappointed with your civil rights bills. You voted for them, though, yeah? Yeah, but they went far beyond the scope of what we agreed to. You play it too fast and too loose with the Southern Democrats' loyalty. We won't be so likely to give it next time. Johnson smiled, taking a step to forward, placing his hand upon Barnett's uh, shoulder. Congressman, I only did what I thought was morally right and what was best for the country. We're all one party, aren't we? Now, let me tell you something, he said with a smile turning sour. If you ever threaten the integrity of that Republican Democratic coalition again, I'll run your career in the ground. Is that understood? Barnett uh, nodded begrudgingly. Excellent, said Johnson, as long as we're all in agreement, right? Run along. Oh boy. A beacon in the darkness. Our country should be a beacon of light for more people that want freedom than the boots of the fascists and Nazis. Our objective individuals, who often end up enslaved or killed, must be saved. We should be loosening restrictions within our current immigration system to make it easier for immigrants to enter the country and work hard to become American citizens. We should be careful, though, in how we implement it, and to make sure the process doesn't become chaotic and possibly harm a country. Opening the floodgates might help uh, so many people, but it might allow Nazi spies to easily enter. On the other hand, if we remain too restrictive, we alienate more people still. Let's make sure we pick the right solution. Oh boy. The Republicans are leaving. Oh boy. Mr. President, things are not looking good. Okay, well, they are looking good for the great society, and I know that is the most important thing right now, yes. There's another bill for you to sign, and yes, we're still getting the laws to Congress, even the poll numbers are still on the positive, but those numbers are just barely above the majority, and we're facing an internal political maelstrom. The Republican Democratic Coalition is crumbling as we speak. Already several big name Republicans have denounced this and are crossing over to the Nationalists. This is really not good. If the RDC breaks up, then the Democratic Party that is left will never win another election. You must understand, sir, that that politics is my thing. I'm here to tell you what is and what isn't good for your political standing. I know the Great Society is great for America, and I'll do what I can to get it passed, but with the party buckling and the sides getting more partisan restless, I don't know how much more I can do within this party. We're going to rely on the moderates of the Repo Democratic, and Progress Democratic Party and the progressives to keep passing great society legislation, which should be enough to get it through Congress, but I really don't know how much further we can push this, and what will happen in American politics if we go much further? Darn, Dems be darn, we'll get this done. The South blaze over the past few days in a dramatic but unsurprising series of events south, as the national MPP population have descended into what they can be kindly called utter chaos. Dozens of protests have been organized all across the former Confederacy in cities such as Atlanta, Montgomery, New, or New Orleans, and Savannah. Oh, look at that. <clears throat> all those things can be attributed to two men in particular, Senator Strom Thurmond of Al and Alabama Governor George Wallace. Uh, these two individuals have riled up the white population against President Lyndon Johnson following the recent announcement that his great society reforms include comprehensive civil rights legislation. 
The Deep South has long been a strong followers of the Nationals, and to a lesser extent, the more conservative elements of the Democrats as such. They've always had a reputation for active defiance against civil rights legislation, but nothing quite to this extent. As of right now, it's unknown why Strom Thurmond and George Wallace have promoted such extreme protests, and the only time will tell if it's only true to impact on the President's decisions. The President himself, despite the furious uh, Southern protestations, have declared that a great society requires equality for all individuals, regardless of race, color, or creed. He dismissed the protest as nothing more than the Nationals wishing they had true influence. It would appear that the Southern Democrat president will hold his ground against Southern rage, but the Congress may not. The South over civil rights? Typical. To angry about him. Enforcement one way or another. Bo Albright stepped out of his car, the balmy air of another sunny Alabama morning warming his skin. He walked along the sidewalk to the entrance of his pride and joy. Albright, Daly, and Butcher. Some people might think a butcher store might be a poor career, but Bo had built this store with his bare hands and was exceedingly proud. He locked the door, stepped inside, began his work of breaking down a fresh hog he just received yesterday. Not after long, uh, not long after he had finished spinning, splitting the hog into its constituent parts, a man in a suit stepped through the door, flanked by the local sheriff, James Green. The suited man introduced himself as David Smith, an attorney from the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. The federal man was definitely an out-of-towner from his Yankee accent, Mr. Bo Allright, he said. I'm here to inform you that your business is in violation of the new federal civil rights mandates. You must remove your whites-only sign. Bo stood there as if not comprehending the man's words. Look at the sheriff, Green, and shrugged. I bought this place with my own two hands, he said. I, don't I got a right to choose who I let in my store? The Negroes is a dirty folk. If I start letting them in, I'll lose all my good customers. If you start letting them in, in, said the Yankee, I have the authority to pursue legal action against you, potentially leading to the condemnation of your property. Don't take your sign down. With that, the Yankee turned on a heel and left the dumpty little butcher shop. Bo looked at the Sheriff Green. You just can't let that carpet bag and son of a gun do this to me, he said. It's a violation of my rights. Sheriff Green said, if you're really angry, call the governor's office. I hear he's already given the Yanks in Washington an earful. We'll get through this. Don't worry, though. I'll doubt that the attorney's going to show up again. I won't tell him if you keep the sign up. The feds are trying to enforce civil rights for those worthy. Even though we must be a beacon of hope and freedom, we may, cannot just completely open the borders of every human on the planet. Instead, we must consider excluding certain amounts of individuals based on a lack of skills that could be problematic to a country's security. All elements of possible moral defect from immigrants must be screened and possibly excluded if a threat if a threat to national security. Yet if we actually consider excluding certain people based on subjective morality, we'd be doing damage to our own country's potential. This decision must be made with respect to all options. Stubborn Southern Businesses Lyndon Johnson looked over the contents of the manila folder laid out on his desk. It was reported that thousands of businesses across the South who refused to observe the law or the new desegregation rules that the government had been attempting to enforce for the past few weeks. Flipping through the pages and names of odds and dates, uh, names, dates, and places, the president finally reached the end of the report. Given the vast amount of resistance to civil rights, it seems necessary that for more effective enforcement, more strict punishments for offending entities are in order. Johnson sighed. He knew the South would always try to push back against such measures, of course. Any single step he took in any direction would cause a mass amount of political backlash, either in the South or the rest of the nation. Few men know uh, just how hard it was being president. And rarely was it more difficult than in situations of disease. He could do nothing or do something and be hated. Problems always go away on their own, right? It's gone on long enough, but policing is the only way. <sighs> there goes state rights. Uh, Dixiecrat support, of course, is going down, but, you know, whatever, I have to keep it all in order. Nope. And, uh, boost civil rights, national spirit, for work hours, minimum wage, which we should have done earlier, but, you know, whatever. Uh, whatever. Deacon, uh, Deacon, a beacon in darkness, but Borman's request. The Iraq Ministry for Foreign Affairs sent an interesting request to our State Department. They wished for the President to publicly invite the Fuhrer to Washington, D.C., which the Germans will openly and graciously accept. Martin Borman's Foreign Minister, Walter Hevel, uh, will travel to America for further bilateral negotiations and the opportunity to shake hands with the President before the cameras. What well, appears to be more of a propaganda maneuver than a genuine attempt to uh, expand the detente. The potential upside of anything appealing to the crowds cannot be dismissed. A good book trip is in order. A Nazi on American soil is too far? Bring him in. Jumbo knows how to deal with him. Bring in Jumbo. Uh, that one. And diminish the nationalists. Progressives. Yeah. Oh, we also have more stuff here too. City on civil rights leaders. A shattered movement. African American voters in the South will increase. Increased pressure on southern businesses, which will anger the and piss off the South. Um, assess southern police forces, and expecting poll stations. Those to include. Lyndon Baines Johnson sat in the Oval Office with a pledge of pure unabashed silence consuming the room. Paper after paper, now just caressing the western horizon, suddenly the door creaked open and the thought entered, uh, and through it entered Vice President Edmund Muskie. The two proposals for a new immigration bill had finally been finished. Republican written, said Muskie, placing the one down in front of Johnson. Democrat written, he said, placing the other. <coughs> Johnson exchanged no words with Muskie. Sap, sap, simply sat. Scanned through the Republican written immigration bill. It was very, very long and thorough and very restrictive. And immigration quotas would be increased, but upheld travel to the U.S. from Germany and Japan would remain heavily restricted and only slightly less requirements on applying for a visa. In short, it was extremely conservative, as he expected it to be. Technically, it wasn't even totally written by Republicans. The Southern Democrats had a part in writing it as well, but the Republicans always had, did have a tendency to draw on, down, draw on others. Next, Johnson flipped through the Democratic proposal. At this point, it was just a rough draft, still subject to significant future revisions. But the groundwork and basic contents were there. 
John also found it to be much more amiable to his plans than the previous one. If implemented, the bill will remove immigration quotas entirely, open up travel to and from Germany and other foreign powers such as Japan, and generally lessen restrictions on entering the U.S., which have been very restrictions since the end of World War II. Which one are we going to move forward with? Uh, asked Edmund Muskie. If we go ahead with the Republican proposal, we'll probably garner some more votes with it, so it's more assured. A proposal, on the other hand, it's much more in line with their policies than campaign promises, but it's harder to push through Congress than the Republicans consider it a slap in the face. Democratic proposal, give me your tired, give me your poor, give me your huddled masses. The Republican proposal, we have to be careful. But for those worthy, if you want to do that again, please go ahead, but the Immigration and Nationality Services Act was updated. Oh, yeah. This bill makes sure more immigrants are able to enter, but their entry will be based on deserving qualifications that can make them potential Americans. Qualifications such as an education, needed skills, and so forth will be sought after to make sure they get priority in the system. Another major provision for this law will give immigrants a clear path for naturalization as well. Following racial qualifications are eliminated completely. It will offer a far more fair and just system of entry that represents the moral character of this entire country. Let's make this immigration system more fair and just for future Americans of the world. The Oval Office photograph. Linda Baines Johnson prod around the Oval Office with his hands thrust into his pockets. Setting among the boy bodyguards, aides, and uh, adjutants. Scattered throughout the room was a lone photographer. The president not shared a photograph with a stumpy little German tyrant during the Stockholm Conference, which was something he wished to remedy. <clears throat> a cluster of bureaucrats and muscled henchmen fell out into the room. Jones tried to conceal a scoff at the pompous brown uniforms. He instantly recognized a bald midget barreling towards him as Martin Borman, who was ta tailed by a speckled translator. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. President. Borman's translator relayed the fierce message. With me are he Walter Hebel, my full minister, and Gerhard Klopfer, my secretary. He gestured to the two men behind him. And a cheery diplomat, diplomat in a black suit and a scowling bureaucrat in a party uniform. The, I'm pleased to meet you too, Mr. Borman, Johnson replied with a smile. Thin smile. He grabbed Borman's hand and a surprisingly firm grip. The president gripped tighter and drew it towards him. Borman pulled it back and shook firmly, clenching with all his might. The smiles on the faces remain neutral. Quick photo for the records, Mr. Borman. The photographer snapped into action and positioned himself. The president straightened his back, placed his hands on his hips, and stood right beside the tiny dictator. The camera flashed. Uh, uh, Johnson turned to face Borman, towering over him like a falling tree. Shall we begin discussion? Uh, Borman stared back without flinching. Uh, he crossed his arms, struck out his jaw, and nodded firmly a photo for the ages, winning over black America. Now, I know that things haven't been exactly going away since we were first brought, brought to America centuries ago. We suffered under the lash of for years, for years, and not just in the U.S., but throughout the entire continent. It was by the will of Abraham Lincoln, by the grace of God, that our chains were finally broken. With some success in American culture, we had Frederick Douglass, we had George Washington Carver, and Rosa Parks. <coughs> These people worked to put us in the spotlight. My fellow African Americans, though we still face prejudice, our words now matter. Our vote finally matters, or our lives finally matter. You know who made this happen? The Democratic Party worked day and night to give us this opportunity. Our great President Johnson needs our help more than ever. He worked to give us a proper right to vote. He stopped every repressive state that tried to lay a hand on us. I say we give it back to him, to the Democratic Party. If you haven't realized yet, my friends, we need them too. We'll accept the President's great society with open arms. After several months of campaign, the Democratic Party started to win over some well-known activists to President Johnson's cause. These activists, in turn, reached out to multitudes of African Americans in the South, persuaded them to use their new vote for the party. While some progress has been made uh, down South among the new black voters, there's still a long way to go before the Democrats could ever become relevant again in the region. At least we're making progress. Let's take a look-see. How bad is it for us? Plus eight! I mean, Jesus. That ain't bad. MPP, huh? Uh, but they're both progressives. That's not bad, but still. Progressives, um... Go there. Up and party. <clears throat> Proceeds to regulation, huh? Balance of budget. Budget surplus. We should be able to do that no matter what, so. Um, even though we don't need it so much from the responsible Republicans, we need to be more hardline Republicans. Whatever. You know, since we're down here, anyways. Who civil rights? A shattered movement. Which is why I can all that Floridian. Um, I'll look at all this stuff. Uh, black community, com community to go and deserve any longer. A massive initiative of social programs outright ought to be started as soon as possible and the impact of Christianity. Black churches are lacking the funds to maintain their current places of worship, so a pr new program too. In the history books, honor their achievements and to do it publicly through measures like ho public holidays too. Johnson stoically kept his polite smob. The utter duration of the civil rights meeting was getting, slowly getting to him. Dozens of leaders from all the black community were flowing in from all over the country, and all of them had their own wishes, desires, concerns, and demands, striking a deal with... <clears throat> All of them would be challenged, nearly impossible even considering the breadth and oftentimes contradictory nature of the goals of the leaders. Lyndon was trying to sit his best. I was trying his best, but he was very much aware of his desperate position. He'd taken an immense amount of concessions to get most leaders on his side, concessions that are bound to tarnish his upcoming legacy. He had no option but to entertain even the most outrageous demands, and his guests were painfully aware of this fact. Longingly, Johnson thought of Martin Luther King. Negotiating with him would have been a breeze. He was one with a person with one one person with one ideology, and he still would have had more influence than all these successors combined. If he were so present, all this would have been so much easier, but fate just had a strike at the most unfortunate moment. Maybe it was too slow, maybe. Mr. President, are you alright? I was just about to lay out my plan on the revitalization of Midwestern inner cities, and I do think it is of the utmost importance, considering the desolate situation faced by many of our discriminated against brothers and sisters, if I may. 
Oh yes, of course, go right ahead. I was just thinking about how to approach Jungle Blue Face in the following weeks, but that is all. Anything to calm down the rides, of course. <clears throat> Han's Tale. Han stood on the main deck of the SS Columbia, a shipping bar barge, as a massive ship holding the port of New York City. A large vessel uh, passed by Alice Island. A mighty woman with a torch watching over the bay, Lady Liberty. This was everything Hans had ever hoped for and more. As Germany had fallen to pieces around him, he fled from his university dormitory to Denmark, then to Scotland. For more than a year, he abided his time in Scotland, learning to struggle English, drafting from job to job, and desperately seeking an entry and visa into the U.S. Hans' wish finally came true with President Lyndon Johnson's new immigration bill, which, after decades of hostility, allowed German nationals to enter the U.S., of course, once they had obtained a visa. But no longer was travel to America limited to the rich or the powerful in Germany. Now, even the poor little Hans could pop onto a ship to a new world for a new life. The barge was reeled in a port on the north side of Manhattan. Uh, walking down the plank onto the concrete dock, the Hudson River at his back, and the wind in his hair, he finally arrived. America. The scent of ocean, salt, garbage, and industrial pollutants dominated the air, but Hans could care less. It was less of the smell of refuse and more of the taste of liberty. Hey, you! Hans turned around to see a greasy looking dock worker with jet black hair and a distinct accent talking to him. You're just gonna stand there, or, you get, or can we get to work unloading this boat? I'm sorry, replied Hans in a thickly accent English. I just arrived from Sweden. My name is John. The man looked over him, a pensive look in his eye. Well, John, the Swede, I need a few more hands on this dock soon. How would you like a job working for me? Hans looked out over the massive hive of humanity called Manhattan. So much was different and new and breathtaking. The Empire State Building. Jet planes flying over far overhead. The hustle and bustle of the living, breathing city of New York. You finally made it. Yes, replied Hans. I'd love a job. You have no time, but that's okay. Selling obstinance. Today, President Johnson held a press conference to address the major issues at hand with implementation of civil rights across America. <clears throat> Many have openly claimed that discrimination is so heavily present across the nation, especially among police forces. The president had heavily anticipated it. statement had this to say. It's been a great many weeks since the passing of America's most recent civil rights bill, however, has come to the attention of our administration that in many cities across America, the segregated areas remain due to extreme police prejudice, that African Americans are so forced to, into lower class status due to the strength of the lawmen who are commanded to protect them. Additionally, there have been claims that certain discriminatory supremacist organizations have infiltrated many municipal police departments. After so many reports from so many sources, it is in my opinion that immediate action must be taken to rectify this issue. As such, our administration will be moving to a shovel of suspect police forces, mandate heavier background checks and screening measures for new officers, and breaking up the bonds between many law enforcement agencies and third-party elements such as the Triple K. Already, the move has drawn criticism from the South, most notably from Alabama Governor George Wallace, bless his heart, who called President Johnson a tyrant for his infringement upon the rights of states to enforce their own laws. It appears that many politicians of the national swing of the National Progressive Pact are moving to block any legislation that the Johnson administration can introduce to regulate municipal police, as it stands. It appears that if the President wishes to see his desires realized, he may have to do it through executive order. State rights, huh? State rights. It was worthy, my friends, of course. <clears throat> and this immigration act, too. If you want to read the game, please go ahead. But yes, my backyard. Use the ghetto rights. Ooh. A roof over one's head. And the Fair Housing Act, huh? Not bad. Not bad at all. Ah. For White House meeting. Responsible Republicans. I mean, responsible Republicans, they don't care. They're like durable and terrific. Is that a size you can get? Durable and terrific. Maybe that is. Okay. Um. Down to budget still, of course. Spend surplus on social spending, which is easy for us to do as well. Happy July, though, everybody. Happy, happy July. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm and toasty and each other to keep us nice and comfortable. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, we can do this too. Mr. Poor Civil Rights. Yeah, we could probably do that too. But we don't need responsible Republicans, like we said. We just need uh, hardline Republicans and Dixiecrats. So we can't do anything else, which sucks. Uh, for now, let's see, actually. Over here, we can't get more political power too. If we really want to. We don't need it. Uh, MPB learns a lackluster campaign. Good. No, that's not good either, though. Still plus eight, not bad. Um, I'm really good for that area here, the Mid Atlantic states. Go there to that one. African for law and order. Oh, it is surplus. So yeah. Well, it's updated. That's nice. Actually, just did that. Shifting winds. Still plus eight. Well, Albright stepped out of his car, stretching his legs after the long drive to Legion Field Stadium in Birmingham. <clears throat> his wife stepped out beside him and they began to walk to the entrance. I'm glad the governor's holding a rally about this whole integration business. Negroes ain't got no business being in my store, no matter how much the darn Yankee attorney tells me I can't stop him. Oh, Bo, said Penelope, you ain't ever been so riled up before. It was a three hour drive to Birmingham. Surprise yourself, so, so upset. Anyway, I'm sure we hope there's good seats for us. They filed past the ticket inspector's booth in the stadium. It was filled with thousands of people, even down in the field. Thousands of filled seats surrounded by George, surrounding George Wallace's platform in the middle. Bo and Penelope surprisingly found empty seats there, not 50 feet from the governor. They sat and listened to George Wallace talk about segregation for a fellow like half an hour. Wow, now, said Wallace, who is here is a small business owner. Bo uh, uh, stood up in a sea of seated men and women. Wallace caught him up to the stage. What's your name, friend? Have you been to a National Progressive Rally before? 
Bo almost sees you up in front of the thousands we're watching. Uh, my name is Bo, Bo Albright. My shovel source led in Negroes by a federal inspector. Uh, I ain't really care for politics. His words were cut out by a thunder applause from the audience. George Wallace took the microphone from Bo's hands. Do you hear that? An average nonpartisan businessman was forced against his will to integrate. So what President Johnson wants. He wants to take away our right to choose not just the states, but his people. He's stepping up his enforcement measures, and I say let him. The National Progressive Pact will stand for what's right, as I've said many times before. Segregation now, segregation tomorrow, segregation forever. These new rules are being enforced. Stranger in a strange land. <clears throat> uh, if you wonder about this, please go ahead. I've heard this before. This is weird because the uh, kingdom of Siberia and King Rurik II is a interesting fellow. He's a very strong fellow to beat, but Russian People's Union, who's this? Oh, Batov. Oh, boy. Oh, that's tough, too. Oh, shnikes. There's so many Russians are going to die, aren't they? Oh, God. Those excluded. As work continues the new immigration bill, an important matter has come to the forefront. Skills. Many applicants. Uh, we surely should have backgrounds in medicine, engineering, and science, of course. At the same time, many others lack such abilities and would instead move into service in the agricultural sectors. Now, the question is, do we want to establish a strict set of... Set of strict... Uh, blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> oh, poor. Uh, criteria for potential immigrants. It would most likely appease the natives in Congress. We make noise about unskilled labor taking American jobs, but at the same time, progressives would prefer generally open tolerant policy. So, what system should we follow? We need doctors, not line cooks. Well, oh well. So, the Republicans are generally, yeah, okay, but the Democrats love it. Progressives like it, and of course the Nationals don't like it. So, 27 plus 37 is usually over 50. Not always, but usually. So, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. Use ghetto rights. Look at the chaos. The looting, destruction, and violence has ruined so many of the great cities. And that looting and destruction comes from the African-American ghettos that remain impoverished. And destitution and utter misery, thanks to our current party's inability to solve the crisis. We must do something to soothe the anger and rage from the black community, as well as prevent more violence between fellow Americans of all colors. The ri riots showcase the current failures of the government. As remain in stagnation with the bill, this is an action must enter, or else our black systems will be uh, in future jeopardy. The concerns among Southern Democrats, Mr. President, this is a disaster, and you know it. Lyndon Johnson... Repressor urged us over the phone. Usually, when someone like Congressman Sid Herlong kicked up a fuss, he'd invite him over for a chat and then loom him over him until the errant soul got the picture. Right now, though, he'd sit in the Oval Office and take it. See, it wasn't the only Democrat pest over the contents of the new immigration bill, but gosh darn, was he loud. My district already has plenty of illiterate foreigners and infiltrators, so we sure as crap don't need more, but you, you count out to these progressive dudes when you know they never vote for either of us. I want to tell you that this will hurt the unity of a party, and it's fragile already. Johnson checked his watch in a few minutes, so it's the Floridian. We'll probably have yelled himself for us, and then he'll be on the next call for the next angry legislator. Oh, it's going to be a long day, and continued resistance. The meeting room had a thick, uncomfortable air to it, caused in no small part by the unusually low ceiling and the burning cigarettes of Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach. <clears throat> the smoking AG sat opposite uh, President Johnson with Governor of Mississippi, Ross Barnett, just sitting a few seats down. Kicking the clan of Southern politics force out of, the fo out of them has been more of a <clears throat> involved affair than previous thoughts, began Katzenbach. Of course, replied Johnson, that's why. We're sitting here. Something's not working, and we need to determine what it is. My recommendation, of course, is to break up the police departments at the court, said Kazenbach. Senior and junior officers need to be more separated, and suspect departments should have full and federal investigations placed onto them. Let's not push us too far, said Barnett. Too much pressure, and you might be facing a case in the Supreme Court. The current stress you're putting on them is foreign enough. It just needs time to sort itself out. Fine, then, sighed Katzenbach. <clears throat> I think we should put some additional measures on. You're just a bit lighter, perhaps. Discrimination is supposed to be bad in Georgia. I'll call uh, Governor Gollum Bird and tell him how he wants to get his state in line. He won't refuse the president, even if he has proven difficult in the past. If our plans work in Georgia, we'll plow them to the rest of the south. Can't just up here. Eight, not bad. Oops. Um, anything? Oh. Harlan Republicans are it's not strong for faction off. Coalition sports kinda of down though, you know, whatever. Oxygen is already pretty low, anyways, whatever. And that's still fine. Still fine for us. Um, probably we'll give it an improve. Doing police up here and inspect polling stations. Improve civil rights. Anger the South. Anger the South. Anger the South. No matter what we do. Measures will help African American business owners by providing a small increase to our state GDP. I like the economic stuff. <clears throat> We're so weak. Oh, hello. Crack down southern businesses. It's all game. Quite literally. 84% still not bad. Immigration Nationality Services Act. Well, it looks like it probably passed because it increases the state's status of civil rights and replaced quotient or quota immigration with encouraged immigration. More multi population. Hurts everything else, though, which is really bad, actually. Um, okay. <clears throat> Waning. Let's see how far we can push this. Middling civil rights. Oh. More GDP. 
Yes, my backyard. Now I understand the worries about less fortunate people entering your beautiful suburban gnomes and wonderful neighborhoods. Maybe you're afraid that they'll give your neighborhood a bad name or that they'll cause trouble or that they would even not be able to fit in and end up excluding you from society. <clears throat> Excuse me, however. That would not be the case. If you can get your congressman to support the Fair Housing Act, you can be guaranteed that less fortunate will be able to rise to your own level with their hard work and dedication. Those underprivileged people who end up having an easier time moving in will be your friend, become your friend, and if anything, make your neighborhood stronger. I implore you to make as a good American and kind American citizen to help you with the less fortunate in the struggles for an independent, happy life. Let's say yes for an even stronger backyard. <clears throat> and it's sold in long order. Both Dixcrats and elements of the Nationals have found themselves openly standing against the Johnson administration after President Johnson himself refused to support the additional anti discrimination measures proposed by G Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach. The changes come after more than a week of protests surrounding comments made by jo Georgia Governor George. Georgia Governor George Walls, huh? In which he called upon the South to resist tyrannical government measures. And many cities, the protests became violent, taking a long time before either calming down or being stopped by the local National Guard units. Senator Strom Thurmond called the week of protests an assault on law and order, with Governor of Mississippi Roz Barnett calling it the day of rage. A term not popular across much of the nation. Now, even the original anti discrimination measures proposed by the Johnson administration are being ignored in the South. The Triple K seems to be openly working with our local authorities, and hate crimes have skyrocketed. Overall, the past few weeks have proven disastrous for the President and the Democratic Party. And Johnson will likely see much more emboldened resistance from the South in the future. Disastrous. Oops. Oops. Hey, we're very strong on everything. Yay. So now we're at 72, which is not good. I suppose they're updated. Oh, boy. Um, we need more hardline Republicans. We're tough on racism. There have been a rise in the number of civil rights cases that have been working their way through the Department of Justice lately, with prosecutors, FBI agents, and all more investigating a variety of racist incidents throughout the South. Bringing police officers, Klansmen, white supre supremacist leaders, and others to trial for their violence, imitation, and flouting civil rights laws. <coughs> well, the gears of justice move slowly, of course. And not all these cases will be decided in the government's favor. There is a growing outcry throughout the South. Now, the feds are overstepping their authority, trying to criminalize the personal opinions and thoughts, trampling the First Amendment, and dismantling states' rights. One particular case where a hotel owner in Georgia was arrested for allowing a white mob to break into a black man's room, tie him up and smash his belongings, threatening to lynch him, has become the focal point of this opposition, with the Yaki's faction of the MPP to announce in the FBI's case, arguing it was overstepping their authority when the state's courts could have handled this, and undoubtedly let the white hotel owner and the mob walk free. Yeah, hockey, uh, or hockey, Yaki, had gained support throughout the South for standing up to the man his efforts to make the black equal. Now it's a phone, the boot is on the other foot, huh? The rise in fear, over the last couple weeks. Uh, oh, squat for Dex Crat support, huh? That's not good. Um, America's born witness to a new fire of anti immigration sentiment. Soaked by activists on the far right of the National Progressive Pact, protests have gathered state capitals and federal buildings across the country. While most of the protests are small number, they're uh, very noisy. Placards proclaim the foreign spies out, hey, LBJ, traitor to the USA, and America for Americans are plastered to TV screens across the, the nation. Uh, meanwhile, TV and radio ads discussing everything from Argentine fascists to black South African radicals are hitting the airwaves. Well, opinion. Polling shows that most Americans disapprove of the sentiment, but it's exceedingly difficult to ignore. Are we not a nation of immigrants? Nationals are growing. Mr. President, the latest polls are in. And it's not good news. For the first time, the majority of the respondents are saying that they're feeling unsure about the cost of the great society. Fear has been stoked by uh, Republicans and nationals about higher taxes and more government control over their lives are starting to filter through the public. Uh, while new numbers of people who support the great society overall are still strong, we should prepare to face growing backlash with the expanded. There are commentators and political scientists who are talking increasingly of the new polarization of American society, all revolving around your plans, with progressives on the left pushing to go even further than the administration wants, and conservatives on the right are demanding a halt to the growth of government power and interference in the lives of citizens and undermining states' rights, and the people in the middle are tired of both extremes. Especially evident on the West Coast. While the majority were supportive of the great society at the beginning, now support is dropping, and dropping a lot quicker than in other places, namely about the cost. It's only going to get stronger, divide more Americans, and lead to a virtual breakdown of society into an us versus them mentality. It'll make it even harder to pass for the laws. Can I catch a break? No, of course not. Why would we? Wait, MPP Nonpartisan League. Responsible Republicans don't care, though. Oh, hello, what's this? Epic longer. Join the picket line? Oh, you become more of the bull right now. A roof over one's head. We cannot allow an American or a minority to suffer housing discrimination any longer. African American, Mexicans, and Asians all suffer from constant discrimination despite their hard work in moving up. Most of them live in slums and in misery and are in streets where they end up causing problems for the rest of us. Even though many of our problems or many of, the, of our white Americans' voters want nothing to do with them. Letting the colored suffer and squad will not only make the country continue to look bad, will possibly not fully secure support for a party from these new voters in the next election. I implore my fellow Republicans and fellow Democrats to implore for the uh, support of the Fair Housing Act, not only for our coalition's sake, but for the sake of America. Gonna keep spending money there, because, uh... 
We're gonna get rid of that debt, and then once we have no debt, then we'll just do temp tax cuts. Hopefully, that's the plan. Four hundred fifty-five billion, huh? Not enough, but we're working on it. Everything's a work in progress. Sixty-nine percent is not good. It's only gonna get worse too. Huh. We get through all of these, and that'll be pretty much campaign. Fair housing act, though. We'll see if we can actually pass that. We should be able to. Provisions and legal exemptions uh, for, uh, for housing. Oh, God. Civil Rights Act 1966, uh, 1866 allowed all citizens to rent, hold, sell, and buy property, but gave the federal government no means to enforce this principle. African Americans' leaders are adamant without equitable access to housing, there will never be equality of opportunity. We're counting on overwhelming support from black voters to survive the wave of backlash for civil rights agenda. We need to pass a bill that meets our standards. Isn't that black population like 60% like or 13% of the population probably at this time? Meanwhile, the national has been most successful in mobilizing opposition with the language of housing discrimination. Why communities fear losing their more subtle means of resisting integration? Even conservatives, <clears throat> Republicans who normally support civil rights, are making noise about freedoms of association and commerce in response to refusal. Our policy seems to come up with several options for proposals to Congress on housing rights, thanks to their creative writing skills. We can pass a strong bill that limits exemptions, a bill that retains a strong language and former while introducing enough K carve outs to at least limit the speed of integration, or a token bill that omits protection or jurisdiction for those targeted for pursuing housing. A late night at the State Department, of course. <coughs> Jim was rushing to edit together the last of the dossier. It's been a long night on this briefing. Tight deadlines were unfortunately a hallmark of the State Department career. At least his time wasn't just plain old news paperwork. A Russian warlord named Pavel Baktov wanted to play a diplomatic visit to the U.S., and Jim had to organize a briefing for people who were going to meet them. They say he's organized a competent fighting force, cracked down on the corruption, and in fact, you not fired half of Russia. All things considered, even if he was head of a military junta, he did not seem to be a terrible American ally, a reliable, hate of the Reich, and not terribly tyrannical. Jim enclosed a clear black and white photo of Botov as the final touch, and he slid all the documents into a yellow folder. He was going to drop it off at his superior's desk. When his superior opened up the dossier, he picked up the black and white photo of Botov and was intently looking it over. Hmm, he reminds me of someone, he said his superior. Who? asked Jim. His superior could possibly remind, he reminds me of an old Russian general, Sivarov. What's so special about this man? Jim forgot that his superior had a background in Russian culture and history. For starters, he never lost a battle. Uh, still eight, no bad. Um, Sheila states. We're very strong on everything. 8.9%. Just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Fair Housing Act. If, uh, we've come so far on civil rights, yet yeah, we need to finish a job. The Fair Housing Act. Should we manage to push through, will be this administration's last greatest legislative achievement in the civil rights debate. By prohibiting any and all discrimination in renting and selling housing, we will see a profound change in the character of our towns and cities. A scale of change that the Fair Housing Act would bring in its status as the last great civil rights bill by this administration have made it the center of the political firestorm. Segregation, see the Housing Act, or issue as a greatest last bulwark against enforced desegregation and impose the bill as strong as they can. Many within our parties encourage compromise, preventing a sense of fallout with conservative voters. Meanwhile, African Americans look to the White House to see if the president is as good as his word. Every choice is well have consequences, but we must choose no matter what. Conservative backlash. Much of the strongest opposition to the proposed Fair Housing Act is coming from conservatives. A prominent Louisiana radio host went on a diatribe against the Curtis Monoparty yesterday, excoriating uh, conservatives for throwing in with the Democratic Party that clearly no, share, no longer shares their values. The Democrats are being caricatured as a public organized Negro agitators trying to bring crime and lawlessness to, into our communities. It's unknown what electoral consequences this new messaging will have, but it is certainly already seen the MPP into flux. Conservatives are weighing their opinions. Soldiers of the motherland in the D.C. Um, if you want to be about here, please go right ahead. Progressives are supportive. Mr. President, there is a silver lining as the Republican Democratic coalition is self destruct all around us over the great society programs. The progressive faction of the MPP has proved to be a strong ally, even as conservative Republicans flee the nationalists. As the Democrats who are in the uh, RDC, <clears throat> only more progressive, we are actually lining up with the progressives on many social and economic issues, which help make the great society legislation easier to pass and promote. Of course, there are going to be issues with working with the progressives. They're much more established leftists and progressives than most Democrats. So the future proposals lean even more towards them, and bolster their own support in future elections. There are even some Republicans calling the first MPP president as we continue to work with them. Politics have always made for strange bedfellows, and working with some of the folks on the other side of the aisle, well, strange and discovering at times, but it is working with Michael Harrington and Scoop Jackson is a lot easier and more pleasant and less migrant-inducing than with Barry Goldwater or Wallace Bennett. Those undoubtedly help us out. Um, <clears throat> get this great society pushed through the legislative branch easier, even though in the end it might just destroy the RDC altogether. First MPP president, at least it wasn't Henry Jackson. Special from Cairo, if you know about that, please go ahead. I'll give you ten bucks, and that's it. Death the Supreme Court, if you know about that, please go ahead. Fill the vacancy. Uh, breaking the storm. After many weeks of sporadic protesting over the inability of the Johnson administration to enforce its desegregation rules upon Southern Paul Police Departments, many cities across the South are beginning to calm down. With no protests, no injuries from clash between the protesters and the KKK or police, it appears that the violence is coming to an end. It appears Governor Maddox of George and Governor George Wallace of Alabama are also standing down, allowing the old federal rules to be enforced once more. 
After the period of violence called the Days of Rage, later weeks of violence between protesters and pro-police elements all across the South, these po pro-police elements are often consisted of the police themselves, as well as members of the white supremacist Ku Klux Klan. All told, over 60 Americans died during the fighting, with more than 1,000 injured or hospitalized. Is that all? Uh, it appears that the Johnson administration, with the violence concluded, is moving once again to enforce the dis desegregation rules upon the South after many weeks of chaos, uh, or chaotic, exhausting work. So the municipal police departments don't seem to be positioned to resist. Perhaps through the fighting and blood of the Klan's poor drive? Yeah, maybe. Fair Housing Act, we'll see what we can do. Excited, man. Happy November now. Got it over 455 billion GDP, and then less than 10% debt to GDP ratio. Hey, 8% is not bad. Nearly, plus, oh, nearly 50 billion. Progressive backlash, more than anything else. Uh, the Fair Housing Act sees a national spotlight, and not in a good way. A sweeping protections and robust enforcement mechanisms put the writing on the wall for many white communities. Town halls from Massachusetts to California full of angry white uh, homeowners fretting about how its passage will affect property values. Schools and crime. The NAACP has launched listening tours in most states uh, to uh, encourage and advise first black families moving into previously discouraged areas. Endeavors have been covered breathlessly, and the press portrayed somewhere between a violent invasion and a conspiracy, even. Some progressive politicians publicly criticize the bill under widespread calls to weaken it in defense of liberty. A few concessions? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, why? Oh, why? Oh, man. There you go. Go have fun. Go nuts. The most basic need. In many years, service as a legislature for the great state of Texas, my belief for to find the ability of our country to legislate through issues of great import and severity. The issue of equal rights for American Negroes is such an issue. Of, it's an issue that has been festering since the foundation of our sanctified nation. Even if we defeat every enemy, we, doubt, we double our wealth and it will still be unequal to this issue. No one failed as a people and as a nation. A third of any of our Negro brothers to rise to the station and prosperity merited by our strength of character and wealth of enterprise is a betrayal of the American dream. I will speak about a specific crisis of inequity before us today. And we can't support these guys either. Lack of fair access to housing is <clears throat> an inequity that perpetuates all other racial injustices. Negro fathers are not access to employment. The children have access to schools all through the myriad sinister compounds imposed on the recruitment of property. Across the country, actors of hatred conspire to limit the bounds of freedom and afforded to the fellow Americans. The time for local action to free the black homeowners passed, and we need federal action to break the back of these malign interests. To my opponents here, <clears throat> and all those who seek to avoid actions by the national government in their own communities. The answer is simple. Attack the racial bias of lenders, sellers, and renters with all your might. Make a world where the passage of the Fair Housing Act is a distant and antique necessity. Until that world, there's reality that the United States would be there to protect the rights and the opportunities of all of citizens, black or white. Not in my backyard. And we did that too, so we didn't have to get any backlash from uh, everything we're doing too. So right now, let's go look-see. We have 49 Democrats. Jesus Christ. What the heck? If anything, we did even better than what happened earlier. And these guys are going to explode down here too, probably. Oh, crap. The oil crust is now... Oh, bro. Muddy waters. Backlash towards the Fair Housing Act has reached a fever pitch and now outspoken support of the bill. A uh, progressive member of the Illinois State House uh, was brutally beaten last night. His mask and sailing left racist graffiti in their tire iron at the scene of the crime. The attack has crystallized support. For the ge bill generally among um, many in that wing, but liberal support of the bill is still, of course, lacking just a wee bit. Uh, a group of senior Republicans, <clears throat> a congressman, came to President Johnson today and warned that pushing through the Fair Housing Act <clears throat> wanted to do irreparable damage to the RDC. They argue that driving white voters towards the nationalists and mass would do more to hurt civil rights in the long term than taking a loss on the issue. Johnson argues that it is no better than ceding civil rights to the progressives, but his colleagues prefer not to throw their already unstable party alignment into the chaos. With both houses of the Congress gearing up for the melee, it's time for the administration to make a final decision whether to put forward the Fa Fair Housing Act or not. If you're not extreme, what are you doing? Kill them all. That's my uh, general recommendation for all this stuff. Locking. We gotta do that one. Uh, that's not fair. fair Housing Act. 37. We have enough. 47 plus 7. Wait, 7 of the NPPs. Oh. Oh, crap. I hate this. 7 of the, the National Progressive 3, and there's only 5 Nationalists. Uh, how do we get 7 of 3? I've never seen that happen before. Talk with the Republicans. 47 plus. Machine falters. Oh, crap. If you want to go that, please go ahead. Um, how does that work if it cancels? Okay. Oh, crap. We got to do this stuff too. Well, if you don't know about these, please go ahead. I've heard these before, so I mean, it is what it is. Everything's bigger in Texas, of course. Synthetic alternatives. Of course, rationing. 
disaster averted. So I would do these real quick off screen because these are always the exact same thing. And it's just kind of annoying sometimes too. So there you the go. The Fair Housing Act passes. And a surprise to many political observers, President Johnson's ambitious Fair Housing Act has passed the Senate today. Some believe that the bill's liberalism and firm stance on neighborhood integration will lead to opposition among moderates and even softer liberals. However, the Senate rallied around the bill. The legislation now heads to President Johnson's desk to be signed. Mark Brown closed the newspaper abruptly, a flash of doubt, perhaps anger, overcoming him. He needed to get to work at the car plant anyway, he said to himself. He gathered up his lunch and keys. He'd been sitting at the bit of the meeting of the Youngstown Democrats uh, the night before and was still a little sleepy from the late night. The news of the law's passage rattled around in his mind and began to commute to work. Doubt bubbled up in his stomach, leaving him sweaty and queasy. Was passing this law really the best idea? Sure, blacks should be able to vote, and the Southerners' treatment of them from what he saw on TV was bad, but what did that have to do with Mark Brown? Why, would it even be, why wouldn't he be able to sell his house to whomever he darn well pleased? He pulled the car into a spot of work and paused for a moment. <clears throat> A man, across the street was a home with a for sale sign, a black couple, the man in a suit. The woman was looking around, nervously approaching the home. For a moment, Mark cop, was caught between remembering how he felt walking up to a house or home around her to make an offer before he remembered the color of the skin and empathy receded. Doubts bounced around in his mind again. He started to shift, crossing the line and risking another one. Cool. Also, we're helping these guys out. We finished pretty much all this stuff over here, and now we're in Iran as well. So, that stuff is kind of annoying. You do it 6,000 times, but whatever. And support is 67%, which is not as bad as it could be. Uh, we're gonna keep that open just in case. Um, home front, we're looking okay too. I mean, at this point, we're looking actually really freaking good. So nobody left behind. There's no doubt that we've done great work in our years running the country. Our administration's made large strides in improving the life of the average American. We have reformed uh, uh, education, engineering, social security, and even widened access to proper medical care. The Great Society program has reached out and made America a better place, and yet we can make it even better now. The Great Society program was formed to help all Americans, regardless of creed, gender, or race. Time has come to begin reaching out to the disadvantage within our country. We begin working on legislation that will allow minorities, women, and all other discriminated against an opportunity to seek better jobs, education. Regardless of how some might feel, we'll not let any American get left behind on our path towards the future. Nice. Iranian men need to die for the freedoms. Uh, security supply lines, we're fine with that for now. Oh, also, uh, I need the race in our class. We've already done much to bring equality to America, but there still remains an issue to be dealt with. While the people are no longer illegally burdened by race, many minorities are still greatly disadvantaged by the economic conditions they face as a result of years of neglect and persecution. If we're truly free the people from the shackles of the past, we must amend our existing civil rights legislation. We also provide concrete legal protections to the economically disadvantaged. We must ensure that all people, no matter the race, their color, their stature, and life are treated with respect and dignity. The progressives are mobilizing Mr. President. The most recent poll is in here. If you look, take a look. Yes, that's right. This isn't a typo. The Yankee support is more than double than their previous numbers. I know it's not allowed in the big scheme, but there's still a tiny sliver of the electorate. But it can still point to the general approval for the general great society. But that right there uh, might uh, break elections. Just a few thousand votes on the right side can make all the difference. Look at this one. Ah, yes, the other number. The Marxists are also getting a boost, too, and a fairly big one. Uh, as the rhetoric is ratcheting up, both opposed and in favor, those on the left or far left, are seeing increased support as well, sticking to the society to be even stronger and farther reaching. Well, they're taking support from both the Republicans and even our allies and progressives. I really don't know what else to tell you. We're seeing the breakdown of the two-party system as we've known it for the past two decades right in front of our eyes. The Republicans have defected, and we're in bed with Harrington, and the nutcases on the extremes of the spectrum are looking, for, are looking better and better. How should push? Maybe we're pushing this too far? I need a drink. I always need a drink. Have fun. We should be able to find. We have almost 60 billion in surplus. Debt is now 5.3 billion. Growth is a little less than 4%, but you know, overall, can't complain. But happy June, everybody. Um, anything else down here? Uh, maybe. More hardline support. Oh, Italy acquired nuclear technology. I still need to Italy again. What should be a good path for Italy? I, I mean, I, this sounds cool. I'm not sure what Italy has available for it. Seeing as, uh, you know, I've not played them in a long time and doing some of these updates and whatnot. I'm trying to see the economics of each country. I'm going to play Borman again. We'll see. Maybe. I've actually done Spare so many times already. But maybe Borman. Nobody left behind, of course. Neither race nor creed. The right to liberty. We all these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and that they're endowed by the creator with certain unalienable rights, the Declaration of Independence. The promise that America was founded upon, though unfortunately up until now, has been a promise denied to a significant number of our citizenry. Now I've ensured that all may be free. All Americans might live on a bound by both law and poverty. All men, they, they be black or white, rich or poor, young or old, uh, might now truly be placed on even footing. Um, uh, <clears throat> for which they may work together to make America the best place it could possibly be. Did we win? Hey, we won. Nice job. Oh. Labor Democrats. Support will go increase by 5%. You know what? Let's hurt our uh, Labor Democrat for more Dixiecrat support. 67% is not great. Squaining squat. Strong traffic because they, like, the Labor Democrats love us. Even though 
Response Republicans, coalition support is going down. Response Republicans, huh? We balance the budget. Hey, 77%. Not bad. And now we're just going for these guys to explode, too. If you wonder about Gene Kirkpatrick and George Jump, is greater the bonfire roars. Can we spend any more? Oh, yeah, we can. F less than half a billion in debt. Oh, hold on. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second here. Great society. Got rid of, literally get rid of the debt. Oh, my God. We have four billion. Nice. So now, I didn't think we'd actually be able to do this and get rid of all the debt. Holy crap, Johnson. Oh, I didn't invest that much. Shnikes. Well, that's not good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, it's a plus, I suppose, but still. Well, okay. See, Supreme Court, it's moderately liberal. We need over, oh god, it's supposed to be 524 billion? Oh my god. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, pursuit of happiness. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, you're going to be breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, a homeless tempest tossed to me, I left my lamp beside the golden door. Emma Lazarus, a new Colossus. With a guarantee of a good standard of living, protection from the rigors of the world, the people of America are now free with the pursuit of mere survival, may instead work on giving their lives true meaning. The Great Society stands not just as a bedrock for America, but as a torch of hope to, help to the huddled masses of our dark and frightful world. As long as we prove through the night that our flag is still waving, we set a poignant example to all the oppressed peoples of the world, that a better world is possible. It's been a stand on America's founding vision from the start. The outcome of the United States' original sin that African Americans have been seen as in fear to the white man. Recent events in the South, where police officers have brutally assaulted a black man, which made the news across the nation and pushed President Johnson and his allies in Congress to start putting together a program that will change the balance. You get racially oppressed minorities the right that the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution legally gives them, but for far too long has been ignored. This program, where it encourages business, academia, and the civil service and others to hire more African Americans, as well as Indians, Latinos, Asians, and other minority groups to be more representative of the population as a whole. Anything else over here we really care about now? Um, come over here, yeah. That'd be good, yeah. Um, of course, there are some that strongly disagree, of, of course. Um, uh, claiming that the black man is already equal in law and the civil rights have gone too far, and that this is yet another unnamed program that will make blacks more powerful than whites. The opposition is coalesced around France, Parker Yakin, his right wing supporters of the MPP, which has seen a boost in support in the polls lately. Scale is only being tipped to make him more equal. 41 Democrats. I mean, I, we just kept getting more Democrats every single election, it seems like. Even when nationals are like, yeah. They're like, yeah, the Rights of Liberty Act. Um, the progressive all love it, of course. So, uh, 16 Republicans. This has been one of the easiest campaigns I've ever done. Johnson is just like a straightforward path just to get everything done. Like, I don't know. I enjoy it like a lot. Don't get a lot, don't get me wrong, but like this is probably one of the easier paths to do. If you know if you know what you're doing, I, I guess. If you know what you're doing. So I'm just gaining. Um you know about this, please go right ahead. I mean it seems pretty normal. Hand me that bottle and need a shot. Oh, maybe I'll read this anyways. You thought the last poll was bad, Mr. President? Look at this one. I know. Double-digit support. The sovereignists. The last few Republicans of the party are basically calling you for your head to beat you with the full support of the nationalists. <clears throat> the remainder of the Democrats and progressives are trying their best to push through the last major proposals of the Great Society, but even they aren't sure they can push through anymore in the face of this opposition. Can I be honest? It's terrible. The party's stability is done. The RDC is virtually dead. An honest to God fascists look incredible to a worrying number, a large number of voters. The Marxists are pouncing at every opportunity to make us look like we're weak and not doing enough. Even our allies in Congress are exhausted and demoralized and are ready to just give up, call a mission accomplished, and we go home. I mean, I can't blame them. We have to wake up to reality here. We're destroying American politics just to push a vainglorious pet project through. Soon there will be nothing to recognize what will be the party left, and it will be free for all in the next election. Hand me that bottle. I need another a shot. Or I need another drink. I need I need a lot of things. Tell me about it. I don't know. It's just, as long as you know what you're doing, it ain't too bad. Okay, so y'all are going to die now. Even though we're probably not... Well, you might get this done. We'll see. Are we going to send one? Oh my god, that's not good. Uh, who's, you're, you're much stronger on attacks. There you go. As long as you send them cast, that's all that matters, really. Somewhat. The balance collapses. Alright, Liberty Act passes, as it should. Um, give me that cast. There you go. And we're live, Mr. President. The TV cameras, a uh, cameraman signaled President Johnson, who well practiced at this particular dog and pony show, began speaking. Good evening, as I'm sure any of you are aware, the Senate today passed the administration's right to liberty bill. <clears throat> Legislation is the next step in a tradition stretching back to the founders that we leave the nation better and be fairer than how we found it. Uh, that is a history of America, recognizing our wrongs and working earnestly to right them. He tapped a thick, powerful finger on the legislation next to him, a pen waiting nearby. This bill does two things which I believe are necessary for us to measure up the tradition. First, it institutes preferential hiring diversity initiatives for federal programs and contractors to counteract the legacy of slavery, racism, 
A reweighing of the scales of justice is necessary and just. Secondly, the Civil Rights Act will be extended to cover those beneath the poverty line. No longer will the poor be discriminated against or saddled with the worst of city or state services. We are all Americans. We are all in this together. With triumph rising in his heart, he picked up the pen and signed the bill. This would seal his place in American history, putting a beautiful capstone in a story career. It would also, help, of course, help those in need be he remembered belatedly as the cameras in the office flash, capturing and preserving the moment. A new era for Americans? The nationals grow even more radicalized. MPP group pack grows more div uh, further divided. A great society. It is done against all odds of critics and most expectations against them. <clears throat> President Johnson has realized his dream of a great American society. Though he might not have gotten absolutely everything he wanted, that, that he has managed to accomplish this as much is a grand achievement. The benefits and ramifications of the new system are sure to impact great American society for decades to come. We are at peace and our people are happy and well treated, and the faith in the system is higher than it has been in decades. At this time, as President comes to a close, President Johnson cannot take some well-earned rest and reflect all upon that he's done. Nice. This is dangerous over here, though. I love it when democ democratic people end up exploding. Beautiful. Nice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just just beat him. Just like kill them. Wow, eight billion? Jesus. Yeah. Bet you're gonna have too much in reserves. Good, good, good. Get through all those militia men. As I'm sure our plans are just gunning Iranians like crazy now. That sounds so like so much fun. Just gunning them all down. <laughs> Yads. Go, my planes or uh, <clears throat> helicopters. Go, chopper boys. Go. We go all the way through there, probably. I just go there first. Kill it. Kill that division off. Just oh, they should play. That's fine. Happy September, everybody. I really can't believe that we did get pay off all debt. I don't think we did that last time, but with the new economic system compared to last time, like it's possible. Pursue happiness, my friends. Happiness. Who's actually happy? 13 billion, my god. <clears throat> Not bad. A great society, my friends. Significant oil concessions, very high unity. Less than almost five and a half percent poverty. That's really freaking good. Also, we did get better well oil machine too, so that's why things are looking pretty good for us too. Ah, Batov unifies Russia. Nice job, Russia. Nice job, Batov. Batov. Just kill them all off. Just gun them all down. Nice. Find them and just kill them all. But a great society, my friends. A great society. When LBJ entered the White House in 1964, <clears throat> excuse me, he entered that office with a promise on his lips. Before America's families and his workers, with God at his witness and in full sight of a skeptical world, the president promised a society where no child would go and fed, and no youngster would go in school. He had promised to end racial discrimination, a healthcare system which promised. Uh, and provided for America's sick and an environment for our children to enjoy for this agenda. President Johnson has been Chris, uh, criticized fiercely from every quarter by those who would be at the enemies of change, yet he pushed on regardless and however lonely that chair in the Oval Office can get. President Johnson could say he made the great society a reality. In the wake of the achievement of our promises, the Republican Democrats have shown rare signs of improved cohesion. Yet yeah, this might prove fleeting. Implementing Johnson's agenda has alienated millions of former RDC voters. We're being wooed by the demagogues and the nationalists, or the MPP, and their unceasing attacks on our policies. Our own party's unity has been greatly strained by the Johnson agenda, making winning a re election a real challenge. Yet, by God, the things we have achieved, we have given the American people hope, it's more so than they dare to show in decades, and what may count this is worth, worth a lot. A great society for the country, the greatest country in the world. So I think that's pretty much it for us. I don't. There's nothing else here for Johnson. So um, I just really wanted to play Johnson again to see what the economic benefits are. And my God, the economic benefits of doing what everything here uh, are pretty freaking amazing. Now we're gonna do temp. even with a temp tax cut, we have a yearly surplus. He's gonna boost the economy as much as we possibly can. But I think we'll probably end the campaign here just because like I just wanted Johnson. Who doesn't want Jumbo? Jumbo and his Jumbo, but. You know, if you enjoy the Johnson Jumbo campaign, please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you are new. Uh, oh, we have powerful civil rights legislation. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I will see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of 
your day.